on the phone, we've got Sam Wynn and she's got a fabulous day coming up uh, at Rickerton and we can kick things off and say a very good morning to you, Sam, and thanks so much for having a chat with us. Good morning, Emily. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Let's have a little uh, chat about your uh, ride on the programme in race number three, the one, Avenalo. 170 and 180, heavily fancied, Sam. You were aboard this horse uh, in a trial. That was on the 22nd of September. What was your impression? Yeah, look, I really enjoyed the ride on this fella. Um, he's very, very professional. It was nice to get a feel on going around the other way around. Um, changed his leg halfway down the straight, but got balanced up and quick and nicely. Um, you know, obviously... Kenny Ray will be hard to beat, but I'm delighted to be on the side of the line on that for sure. He's very, very professional. Hard to fault uh, the form with uh, two trials uh, for two win wins. Uh, tactics in the race or just see how it unfolds, obviously, with a first starter? Yeah, for sure. And I'll just wait until I switch base with Jamie to see what he would like. But um, look over the 800 metres, I think. We just If he jumps well, we'll go with it, you know. Um, I think Kenny's one will, will lead, so if we could let... Him do the donkey walk early, that would be ideal, you know, and hopefully hit the line in front. Uh, up next in race number five, we wanted to touch on Bordeaux La Rouge, who's uh, another key rider in uh, your book. 270 and 340 is the price around Bordeaux La Rouge. Stuck on OK fresh. What did you take away from that run, stepping up to the 1400 today? Yeah, look, it was a nice run going forward. Um, the slow track just kind of tripped him up a little bit on the day because um, it was his first run in, in quite some time. So um, he would take a lot of improvement there with that. We're drawing one, can't ask for better. Um, it's a tidy little field, but I'm definitely um, confident enough on my fella. Um, I'd like to see what he can do today because he's a lovely toy. And uh, you've also got uh, Phantom Witness. Uh, Phantom Witness obviously taking its uh, spot in uh, the seventh race on the card. And 380 uh, is the price both fixed and tote for Phantom Witness. Massive effort hitting the line last time. Pretty impressive, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, I got quite excited after riding this fella. Um, I'm very lucky at the moment getting to sit on some really nice horses. It's exciting as a jockey, but this fella um, really, really excites me with the way he ran home the last day. I really thought I got up on the line. I was gutted on the day that I didn't, but look, he gets into a nice 74 race here today. Um, the draw is a bit sticky, but I'm, I'm very, very happy going, going forward with him, especially the distance. He should be strong to the line. Um, the Chiaka were the runners... Will be hard to beat on their previous runs, but I'm um, definitely delighted to be on the one I'm on. And I'm sure the one that you're most looking forward to is in the feature of uh, the afternoon at Rickerton, Cornflower Blue. And doesn't really need a whole lot of introduction off the back of that uh, maiden win. I think it's scored by over six lengths. I'm, I'm sure you're pretty pumped to get on this one. Yeah, I really am, Emily. Um, I watched this horse live when I made it, and I was so impressed. And then when I got asked to ride her, I jumped up and down. I was so excited because, like, you know, being in the South Island, you don't get to ride many, many Zabobils, if you know what I mean. So, yeah, really chuffed going into today. It's a very competitive field, but um, it's hard to look past the one I'm on, that's for sure. Have you had a look at uh, perhaps tactics and, and where you'd like to be in the race? Well, uh, just studying her videos, like, she seems to have a lot of natural gait speed. So, again, I'll talk to Jamie and see what he'd like me to do. Um, Eva James is obviously going to set a nice pace in the race. So, um, as long as we jump and we're comfortable in the running, I think that's all you can ask for. And then in uh, the 10th race of the day, you've got Who Dares Wins and uh, a lovely, consistent uh, type of a horse who seems like such an honest performer. Is that your impression as well? Yeah, for sure. He's... Um, a horse that is deeply in my heart. He's um, he had some great days. Um, he's not finished yet, though, that's for sure. Just the weight is kind of tripping him up at the moment. Um, he missed the race a few weeks ago, um, so he's going into this race. I'm, I'm sure he'll improve, take a lot of improvement from the run. But he's that genuine, you know, he, he won't be far away in the finish, that's for sure. Yeah, and we're drawing a nice barrier, so as long as we get a nice run in transit carrying that weight, we should be there about Sam, you seem pretty confident about uh, a number of your rides on on the card at uh, Rickerton today. If you had to pick one out as your your best that you think you can win on, what would it be? Look, I'll probably I'll go for Phantom Witness because I think so highly of the horse. Uh, I think so highly of most of them, but um, there's a bit of value with him, you know. Um, yeah, I really like that horse going forward. Well, there you go. Thanks so much for catching up with us, Sam. And uh, best of luck this afternoon. You've got a, a busy day ahead. You'll be earning your keep uh, this afternoon, that's for sure. 
Yeah, definitely. We'll bring it on. It's a great day's racing ahead and very, very looking forward to it.